All right, hold on to your hats. Hurricane season is already here, and scientists predict 13 to 20 named storms, with three to five of them becoming major hurricanes. Now, a first of its kind report from CoreLogic finds more than 32 million homes on the Atlantic and Gulf Coast are at risk from hurricane wind damage. It's the first measurement of climate change wind risk. All right, take a look at this. It shows two houses hit with 130 mile an hour winds in a test chamber. The yellow house has been fortified, the other built to standard code that is standard in many communities. And you can see what happens. Here's another look. The test was done by the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. They have rated the states along the hurricane coast of the Atlantic, 18 states in all. And get this the organization says when it comes to building codes, enforcement, and contractor licensing, Delaware is dead last. With me now is Ann Cope, the chief engineer for the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. Ann, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, good to see you. Okay, dead last sounds pretty bad. Tell me what dead last means. You had those three main criteria for your study. Tell us more about that. Well, it does, um, but you know, there's there's certainly a lot of uh, hope and good news. So dead last because we are looking at the whole state. Um, so Delaware is last in our report because Delaware has not adopted as a whole state. Um, a statewide code and, and doesn't have provisions for enforcing that statewide code and licensing building contractors and roofing contractors. There's good news though. There are several towns and local jurisdictions that have taken matters into their own hands and are making sure that they do adopt codes to make sure that their citizens have homes and businesses that are built to modern building codes. So the difference that we're talking about is statewide versus individual municipalities. It, and you think it makes a big difference? You know, I really do. Um, because um, a state like Florida or Virginia or South Carolina, when you adopt as an entire state, there's no question it, it's a culture of adoption and enforcement of building code provisions. Everyone knows what to expect. Um, homeowners, business owners, insurers, um, people who are, are financing loans, everyone knows that culture of building code adoption and enforcement, and you can see it in the post-damage investigations. We see reductions of up to 40% in the amount of damage when codes are adopted and enforced broadly. And why is there resistance to a more unified building code across a state? You know, it, it varies from state to state. Um, Delaware is one of eight states along the hurricane coastline um, that doesn't uh, adopt and enforce a building code statewide. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's all politics are local, right? So it's, um, there may be local reasons why, oh, maybe it's too much for the state. We'll leave it to the counties. We'll leave it to the jurisdictions. But what happens is it results in a patchwork. Um, you've got some wonderful, beautiful towns that are only using the 2009 building code. You've got towns that don't have a building code. Um, you've got mm -hmm. some that are stuck in 2012. Um, so it makes a big difference. And, and we would love to see Delaware um, take the initiative and go ahead and have a statewide code. So for us in this area, we talk about the Delaware beaches and we also talk about New Jersey beaches. New Jersey's on your list and it does quite well. Tell us, the, right. tell us about that and then tell us the difference between New Jersey and Delaware. So New Jersey has adopted as an entire state. New Jersey says we're going to adopt modern building codes and we're going to make sure that the whole state's using them. Um, so buildings that are built in Atlantic City are using the most modern building code, whereas um, Lewis, let me double check my notes, uh, Lewis is only using 2012. Um, so there's a lot of improvements and changes and connections and details that have happened in the codes that um, people on the Delaware beaches are missing out on and people in New Jersey are guaranteed, yeah, the whole state is going to use the building code. Your organization promotes a building system called Fortified. Can you walk us through that? Sure. Um, so here, um, with using the fans behind me, we, we've done decades of research to figure out cost-effective ways of making homes and small businesses stand up to what Mother Nature brings, that wind and wind driving rain. You don't have to know all of that stuff. You just have to know to get a fortified building. We make sure that the connections are right. We make sure that the roof is right. 
We make sure that if you're near the coast, you're using impact protection to keep those windborne debris out of your house, that you have a strong garage door. Again, you don't have to know all those pieces of research that we've done. You have to know to ask for Fortified. And if you have a house that's already built, but you're in the market for a new roof, Fortified Roof. It's gonna keep the roof on, and if the roof kind of has a little wind trouble, it's going to do the very important job of keeping the rainwater out. That's an important thing to talk to somebody when you're either having something done, a home improvement, which everyone is doing, whether you live uh, down the shore or not, uh, is to say, I want whatever is done fortified because it's hard to know code and what should be in it. And I call my local municipality and what year code are you using, right? So is that the best advice for homeowners? Ask for fortified? Oh, particularly down the shore. Ask for fortified. Um, you know, my very own parents went through a, a hurricane experience where they lost a few shingles, they lost a little bit of roof cover, and the water just came pouring into their house. They had to stay in a trailer for months on end. That damage, um, that excruciating months in the parking lot, could have been avoided with that fortified roof. So that is the best thing that a homeowner down the shore can ask. You talked about cost effective, but I'm guessing when people hear this, they're going to think, of course, fortified, but fortified is going to cost a lot of money. You know, the sealed roof deck on average costs about $500 per house, um, which is not zero. Um, but as a percentage of that whole roofing cost, it's really fairly low. And the idea that having that sealed roof deck, if you do get a couple of shingles that lift up or if you lose shingles on part of the house, the fact that it can pre prevent just bathtubs and bathtubs worth of water from coming down in your house, that to me is a good benefit to cost trade-off. You should also talk to your insurance agent because most of the insurers um, are well aware of the Fortified program and there might be something uh, for you in that program. My guess is too, it's not going to prevent all damage, but it's going to lessen the damage your home sustained. And let's talk about safety too. I mean, in some cases, perhaps save lives. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so we put the Fortified program together to prevent avoidable damage and to help people take care of their most important, most valuable asset. Particularly now, we are spending more and more time in our homes. We live there, our stuff is there. Um, many of us are working from home. So let's, let's treat that investment as the very valuable thing that it is um, and consider what you can do to get ready for hurricane season potentially including that fortified roof. Ann Cope, Chief Engineer with the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. And thanks so much. Oh, it's good to see you. Thanks so much. We did reach out to the office of Delaware Governor John Carney and the Builders and Remodelers Association of Delaware for a comment about this report, but did not receive a response.